this is a so presenting with the history one year old female child presented to the hospital with a chief complaint of defect in the uh, palate since birth she is a first born child born at a full term in hospital in a tertiary care center her father's age at the time of birth was 27 years and mother's age 24 years at the time of child birth uh, marriage was non consequence marriage her her parents has difficulty in feeding uh, the child for which they started using spoon for feeding uh, history of birth events there was normal cry at the time of birth without any respiratory obstruction no no bluish discoloration uh, noted in the child and child was uh, lying down so uh, normally uh, uh, there is a history of recurrent urtis and nasal regurgitation and there is a history of ear discharge uh, no history of any fever or any other illnesses in antenatal history patient's mother was taking oral uh, folic acid and multivitamins and no other medic medications uh, uh, during her ANC period uh, she did not have any uh, viral infections or any radiation exposure or oligohydromnios during her entire pregnancy uh, she is a non smoker and non alcoholic there is no history of any other congenital deformity uh, child has attained uh, the milestone uh, till age and immunized, immunized till date coming to the family history there is a no no similar uh, uh, history among the family members coming to the treatment history she was taken to hospital after birth her parents uh, were explained about the feeding and further managements to start with the uh, general examination uh, sir i have uh, examined this uh, ch uh, child uh, which is uh, lying uh, comfortably in the mother's lap and uh, the child is conscious alert and playful on head to toe examination uh, there is uh, no other congenital anomalies uh, noted apart from the cleft uh, uh, she, uh, he, uh, the child is a febrile pulse is 80 beats per minute respiratory rate is 18 cycles per minute there is no evidence of pallor ictus clubbing cyanosis or edema uh, the skin uh, examination appears to be normal on systemic examination uh, cardiovascular system uh, uh, see on cardiovascular system examination s1 s2 heard no murmur respiratory system examination air entry is bilaterally equal no added sounds per abdo examination abdomen is so soft and uh, non tender coming to the local examination on inspection face is symmetrical uh, lip and nose is normal oral examination alveolus is normal uh, tooth is present incomplete uh, cleft uh, present extending from soft palate to hard palate posterior to incisive foramina uh, palatine shells are horizontal and adequate and at the level of molar tooth and is approximately by 2 by 2.2 cm in uh, length the palatal cleft is 0.6 cm Uh, pa palate, palatal uh, uh, index is 0.27. Uh, soft palate movements are normal. So, coming to the diagnosis, it's due to incomplete secondary cleft palate without any apparent syndromic association. Okay, uh, Dr. Sudhanshu. Yes, sir. Ah. So you presented well, very well, but uh, some things in history, I think you should uh, little, what you call, uh, 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 elaborate on. Like, uh, what was the age of the child you told? Uh, sir, one, one year old female. One year old child. So yes. now, uh, this uh, 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 this child, you told that they, they had a, parents came with a history of difficulty in feeding. So uh, what difficulty in feeding, what exactly? Feeding difficulty they had got. Can you elaborate on that? Like uh, that may be a part of your history. Sir, like, uh, what exactly was uh, their child or not? Tell. Yeah, they, uh, uh, after feeding immediately there was a nasal regurgitation. Uh, they are told, and uh, uh, that was the complaint from the parents' side. Hmm. So and uh, chi and initially the child was not gaining weight, so that was hmm. the complaint. Sir. Hmm. Okay, the child came to at one year, na? So. From uh, birth, 
Wow. Then how did the parents treat the child? What did they do? What they went somewhere? Somebody advised them uh, to use? Uh, no, sir. Uh, sir, sir the, actually, uh, uh, the, uh, the child was born in a tertiary care center in our hospital only. And okay. uh, after birth, uh, the pediatrician has explained them that uh, this, this, uh, this is a cleft uh, palate and it needs to be operated uh, after uh, nine months of age. And uh, uh, then there was uh, then this child was referred to our OPD as well. So we have uh, explained the parents about uh, how to feed the child. Yeah. And and uh, and the child was subsequently coming for the follow up, but because of the COVID time, uh, now since the OPD has got open, so they have presented to us now. Right. So that that's what I wanted. Like this medical history, you should also include in your. Uh, History like child yes. was born in a tertiary care center. Sometimes child children are born in villages and yes. they don't have any access. They didn't know then all those things. No, that, that will yes. have an idea of the uh, like uh, uh, the exposure of the child in the last uh, few uh, yeah like one year what the child has faced. <coughs> that yes. number. Yes. In addition, I just wanted you commented something on ear distress. Child had frequent ear distress, something like that you told. Yes, this this like, this was the this is the history given by the parents that uh, on and off uh, there is a ear ear uh, discharge uh, uh, in the child uh, for which uh, they have seeken uh, pediatric uh, advice also. And uh, uh, actually, we have uh, already explained to the parents that uh, these are the uh, symptoms which can be there, and these are due to uh, basically the cleft palate per se. So uh, uh, after the after the correction of the palate, th these all complaints will gradually subside. Okay. No. So what in the history you can actually elaborate a little bit on the ear discharge? Was it foul smelling? Uh, so, uh, yes, sir. So, uh, so they uh, they uh, on and off discharge they have given, and it was not a false foul smelling discharge, sir. It was a serious discharge, and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and apart from that, uh, after some uh, positional manure or after uh, putting some drop, which is advised by the pediatric, is used to subside, and uh, eventually again it used to recur. So this kind of history they have given. Yeah, that history you should add, like. Uh, uh, when you're talking about discharge, see what happens, how it is relevant is when already discharge has started coming, when some perforation has happened in the tympanic membrane. Okay, yes. so when yes. you're talking about that, that becomes a secondary history. So maybe you can also include uh, little details like how many times, how frequent, why it is happening. Then, uh, because that will also have a bearing on your protocol, like treatment, yes. further treatment protocol. Okay, then yes. uh, one more thing you told about milestones. So uh, you told milestones are normal. So that uh, can you elaborate like one year what milestones you expect relevant to this particular uh, case? Sir, uh, like uh, child uh, child smiles, uh, they uh, start to utter uh, monosyllables, uh, monosyllabi, and uh, they uh, they they start to copy the reflexes and uh, and few uh, like can make a cubes of one. One one yeah. cubes you yeah. can make. So social smile after three months he attains mm -hmm. social smile. So all this. Correct. So that elaboration may be included because we are concerned about one is we are in a craniofacial any kind of craniofacial syndrome. We expect like we have to keep in mind that mental faculties may be affected. So when yes. we are elaborating on social smile, we are actually eliminating those things. Second yes. is since it's a cleft palate. Little bit about what kind of speech he is able to speak, what, how the sound is coming, what kind of thing. That also because one year. Suppose this child was at three months or six months, maybe something would have been different. That has to yes. not be there. But yes. at one year, you should be elaborating on the uh, uh, speech milestones, general milestones. Okay, like uh, yes. any other psychological uh, different development is there, all those things. Yes. And in addition, I think, uh, did you comment on the vaccines and everything? Did the child, has the child taken regular yes, vaccines? Yes, and... I, have, I have mentioned uh, immunization is uh, till date, sir. Right. So nine months right. of measles and DPT, happy, everything is done till date, sir. Right. I think I might have missed it. So, no issue. So that is to be included. Uh, yes. uh, Sandeep sir, Lakshmi madam, uh, Bhattacharya sir, you would want to add something? Anybody else want to? Okay. So, so now we'll yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, advice you have given, you told. Uh, so you usually recommend uh, spoon feeding. 
uh, yes ma'am uh, this uh, feeding advice uh, we explain generally to uh, parents but more uh, uh, distinct to mother how to feed the child so uh, so uh, first thing is feeding we explain it's the frequency should be increased and yes. and quantity should be re re reduced and uh, second is positioning in this case is very important so uh, generally uh, we explain that uh, the patient should be uh, sitting comfortably in mother's lap and uh, when when she is feeding the child she should be feeding with the spoon uh, directly on the uh, posterior posterior part and uh, after after uh, feeding uh, she, she should be uh, the baby should be taken on the shoulder and should be uh, patting should be done uh, and uh, patting should be done so that the uh, whatever uh, air is is gone in the stomach can come out after the child burps immediately child should not be uh, put in the prone or supine position now after feeding and also along with that uh, like uh, after uh, uh, apart from spoon we can also advise a milk bottle with uh, various modified nipples which are av available in form of uh, haberman's nipple uh, uh, mead johnson nipple or uh, criss cross or cross cut uh, or long nipples these are the nipples which are available yes it's uh, not the upright uh, uh, sitting posture it's a uh, 45 degrees uh, elevation uh, is uh, recommended yes, and uh, as you said uh, uh, with spoon or uh, this uh, squeeze bottle with uh, these modified nipples long nipples yes, with yes Okay. Yes, and yes, uh, this patting just for uh, burping uh, until yes. uh, that uh, you, yes that is and why yes. this uh, ear problems a uh, pilot child will have yes ma'am so uh, basically uh, this ear problem uh, is uh, because of the uh, defa uh, default defaulty opening of the eustachian tube uh, so because there is a mal alignment of the musculature which controls the opening and closing of the eustachian tube uh so uh so there is a uh, so there is a repeated infection uh is it uh, mal alignment or any the... problem is it mal alignment uh ma'am uh, which musculature are you talking about dr sudanshu what musculature specifically sir uh, tensor uh, tensor villi uh, 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 palatality and levator uh, palatality uh, uh, is it mal alignment like madam is asking is it mal alignment or something else what happens can you explain a little bit more clearly why eustachian tube uh, like uh, ear discharge is happening uh, what is the function of eustachian tube ma'am ma'am is uh, uh, like while while swallowing your yawning uh, the eustachian tube uh, is open because of this con uh, contraction of this uh, muscles so uh, in 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 cleft child uh, Uh, because of this uh, miss articulation generally these two muscles which i have told ma'am there is a isotonic contraction uh, to open the eustachian tube uh, but uh, in cleft there is a isometric con uh, contraction so because of this there is a repeated in infection occurs inside the eustachian tube which leads to crusting and uh, and uh, pr production of a, a serous serous fluid inside that which if not uh, if not repaired may gradually leads to serous otitis media and uh, later on Uh, uh, purulent otitis media and generally it can cause a rupture of tympanic membrane also so to prevent that uh, like uh, we can uh, go for grommet insertion so will you advise the child to go to uh, ent surgeon frequently because yes, the child has uh, come to the tertiary care center yes so uh, to prevent that and uh, diagnose uh, asym early and uh, grommet insertion isn't it yes 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 actually the they i think uh, sir that uh, this uh, station tube it equalizes the balances the pressure in uh, the middle ear okay so yes, the abnormal insertion and uh, attachment of uh, this uh, levator pallet and the tensor pallet uh, which passes around this eustachian tube the function of eustachian tube is affected because of this yes. uh, abnormal uh, uh, dehiscence of the yes. palate and uh, muscles so yes, that is the uh, uh, the equilibrium and the pressure maintenance in the uh, ear is affected and because of the negative uh, vacuum created in the middle ear that leads to this uh, 
collection of fluid and uh, ASOM. Okay. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, frequent visit to the ENT surgeon also essential to diagnose at the earliest. Uh, uh, this ASOM and uh, uh, address to this uh, problem. Yes, ma'am. Okay, right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, suppose the ENT surgeon, okay, then uh, the ENT surgeon decides that grommet has to be put. Then yes, when ma'am. will you put uh, Sir, uh, uh, sir uh, if, if there's a frequent ear infection and uh, like uh, on uh, Otoscopy, if there is an impending perforation, like uh, tympanic membrane is, is very tense, then uh, better to uh, uh, go on the anterior inferior quadrant and put a grommet. Right. Okay. So, uh, okay. can you tell me, uh, like, what is this palatal index you told in your history? Yes, sir. So, uh, pa uh, sir, uh, Actually, I, I have told the approximate uh, so palatal index. It's it's basically the length of the individual uh, individual segment, width of the individual seg uh, width of the palate divided by length of the individual uh, palatal segment uh, is uh, giving this uh, uh, palatal index. And uh, it, uh, and based upon that, it is classified into three types: mild, moderate, and severe. So if it's uh, less than 0.2, it's mild one. Yeah. Just uh, a second. It is the width of the width of the. Uh, shall repeat the. Uh, Formula again. It is the width of the width width of the uh, width of the cleft uh, divided by the uh, uh, palatine uh, shelf. Uh, uh, both palatine shelf. Width of the shelves. Okay, not the length. Yes. You mentioned length, yes. No? Yes. width. Yes. divided by width of the shelf. Yes. Okay. Yes. Based on that, it is divided into mild, moderate, severe. What is yes. the what is mild? What is moderate? What is severe? Sir, uh, less than 0.2 is mild. 0.2 to 0.4 is moderate, and uh, more than 0.4 is severe. Sir. Okay, correct. Then what is the significance? Why it is important? Uh, sir, uh, sir, uh, like, uh, uh, actually, it's important to know, uh, uh, like, what kind of uh, base, what kind of procedure we are planning to do. Like, if the uh, it's less than point two, then, uh, and if it's involving on, only the uh, secondary palate, then we can go for von Langen back. And if it's uh, two, two to four, point two to point four, then. Uh, we by pushback we can go for okay well, so, not okay so basically you remember that uh, you tell that that is the like uh, it is indication of the severity of the defect cleft and it will have a bearing on the type of procedure we are wanting to do yes yes said, yes so if i will do one onion back like that okay yes, yes so for this particular child now what is your plan of action like how will you manage Sir, uh, so uh, in management part, I would like to uh, first investigate and then uh, uh, plan my surgery. Uh, uh, plan my surgery. So for investigation, sir, uh, the the first thing I I want to uh, rule out is any active infection uh, in the form of URTI or fever. I have I I will rule out that. And secondly, any uh, congenital anomaly, which is definitely not in this case. So uh, after ruling out two th uh, these two things, I'll, I would uh, uh, like to go for a few of the uh, investigation, which is required for anesthesia, anesthesia point of view and definitely the COVID. And after that, I will uh, plan uh, my surgery in this. So in this case, I would like to go for uh, VY pushback surgery, sir. Okay, well, just go gradually. Yeah? Don't, uh, like my suggestion is, uh, just answer what is asked so that the next question can come. Oh, that is how it happens in exam. If you give your answer be beforehand, then yes. you, you get questions, uh, severity increases, the type of questions that difficulty increases. So now your plan is you will do this investigation, do your management. So one thing what I what you were telling was uh, that COVID, is it recommended now? COVID, you tell I'll definitely do COVID. Sir. Uh, sir, uh, uh, like as of now in our institute, uh, we are uh, not doing cleft surgeries uh, since this this wave because uh, they are like there's a protocol only emergency cases we no, can that's do. Okay. That's okay. What I'm saying is, what is the ICMR guideline latest on? Since you talked about COVID, I'm asking you this: What is the ICMR guideline latest on uh, this COVID preoperative testing of children or patients of for COVID? That is, the ICMR says it is not required. Just for your information, like ICMR says that preoperative COVID uh, testing is not required. Uh, we will not go whether it is uh, about the uh, details of it, but this is our guideline. Yes. If the institute protocol is valid, then you can always say that. We are in our institute, we follow the of COVID testing. Okay. Yes. That's, yes. that's for yes. your information. Yes. Okay. 
Lakshmi Madam, please. You can ask, Madam. Ah, Sudanshu, yes, I have a question for you. Yes, uh, sir, already asked if there is an uh, infection or in uh, a recent upper tract, respiratory tract infection. Uh, yes, why you don't want to do and how long you will wait? Ma'am, uh, I'll wait till the uh, active respiratory tract infection gets subsided. So, like uh, uh, active means uh, uh, if you give antibiotic uh, in three, four days, this subsides. So, yes, will you do the surgery immediately? Uh, no, ma'am. I'll wait for a weekend or so and then I'll operate on this child. Uh, will it be sufficient one week? Why you don't want to do a surgery when there is uh, some infection or inflammation? Uh, ma'am. If you give antibiotic for four days, one week, it will subside. Will you do immediately surgery? No, ma'am. Not immediately. Hmm. You are telling yeah. one week. There is some reason mm. that I am asking. Ma'am, uh, 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 because uh, ma'am, uh, uh, post of uh, patient get some kind of throat infection because of the packing which we do. So just not to aggravate. No, uh, no, no. And, 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 because, and because of edema, ma'am, uh, this we, we suture the layers. So uh, edema is there and suture can give away. So that is the reason. Not exactly. It's mainly because uh, uh, when there is infection, there will be associated inflammation and increased vascularity. And you do the surgery even after the infection is subsided in one week with the antibiotic, uh, there will be lots of bleeding. Okay. Yes, so yes, the inflammation and uh, any uh, injury, wherever yes. in the body, the yes. inflammatory process to subside at least three weeks it will take. Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes. especially yes. in the palate there you expect the bleeding. So it yes. will be more and uh, in a small child, this uh, procedure when you do, the bleeding will be, blood loss will be more. That yes, way always you have to wait for three weeks and there yes. is active infection, you have to give the treatment and wait for three weeks, then only uh, do the surgery. Okay? Yes, Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Sir, you can proceed, sir. Thank you, sir. So, like Madam said, that uh, the, uh, after any upper respiratory tract infection, we are worried about hyperreactive airways. So, that is the reason why anesthetists say wait. They don't want to uh, like uh, just postpone that. The child will have hyperreactive. They are all respiratory infections. So, the lower airways also will become reactive. Yes. So, the mm. child may go into spasm. So these are the things you need to remember. Uh, yes, uh, okay, now we'll uh, see uh, what is your uh, uh, this diagnosis? What diagnosis you made? Uh, sir, sir, it's a uh, uh, view uh, to incomplete uh, secondary uh, cleft palate without any syndromic uh, association. Can you tell me any other classification of cleft palate? Uh, sir, uh, uh, first classification. Uh, is a, uh, a morph uh, is a view classification. Then after that, uh, Indian classification will follow Nagpur classification or Doctor uh, uh, Balakrishnan classification, in which there is a group one only lip is involved, group two palate is involved, and group three lip palate and alveolus is involved. So uh, okay. Nagpur cl classification we we follow, and then uh, there is a. a Karnahan and Stark classification, which uh, uh, depends on the embryological uh, development. So uh, that, that is a anterior to incisive foramen, posterior to incisive foramen, including all the three. So Correct. these are the commonly followed classifications. Yes. Okay, that's right. Then what are your goals of treatment? Uh, sir, uh, goals, sir, uh, if I heard correctly, it's goals of treatment, sir. Hmm. Yeah. What is so, your goal? Uh, what, what sir, sir, so, uh, so uh, first goal of treatment is to get an, an anatomical uh, correction, sir, closure, anatomical closure, and uh, 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 then then uh, my uh, second goal of treatment uh, will be to uh, uh, to lend, uh, to uh, get a lengthen uh, palate uh, mm -hmm. ten tension ten and third is definitely a tension free closure, sir, and. Uh, Fourth, fourth goal will be to uh, get uh, uh, velopharyngeal competency, sir. Yeah. 
Okay, so the pulse of treatment will be number one to have anatomical uh, closure. Yes. Number two, achieve adequate length of the pellet. Yes. Number three, have adequate velopharyngeal competence. Number three, four, adequate speech. Yeah, post operative, post operative, component. Okay, so uh, uh, what are you planning? Like, what? Uh, how will you achieve your goals? Uh, sir, uh, in this case, uh, 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 I'll plan my surgery and the technique hmm, which I'll follow is a uh, V by uh, view Waldener Killer uh, procedure, sir. So that is V by pushback procedure, sir. Okay. Uh, any particular reason why you want to do VWK procedure? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, uh, in this case, uh, uh, since uh, this is a, a secondary pallet, sir, and uh, that that to an incomplete one, uh, uh, so uh, uh, this because of that reason, I think I'll go for VY pushback, and also I have to like I need to get a, a bit of a palatal lengthening. So yes. for that reason, I'll go for that procedure, sir. And it definitely not involving the primary one, so there is a, like uh, I don't have to go for Bardax to plan. Yeah. So, so that is, is the difference. Yes, yes correct. No, that is your choice. Like, what is the difference between these two procedures? You since you told Bardax, what is the difference between Bardax and VWK? Sir, so in in uh, in Bardax, uh, we we take uh, uh, we take uh, two posteriorly uh, based uh, flaps, uh, and uh, the anterior endpoint is uh, we include the uh, we come to the tip of the alveolus, and then we uh, we come in the midline. Uh, in in this in this VY pushback, we actually. Uh, after after going to the maxillary tuberosity and after extending the incision anteriorly, we take uh, we uh, come backward. We take a back cut and come to the midline, and then in a form of pushback a VY, uh, we uh, do a midline closure. So that is uh, the basic difference in those those two procedures. All right. Then uh, what? Uh, why is uh, like uh, VWK not recommended nowadays? Generally not Sir, recommended nowadays. Uh, uh, yes, uh, sir. Uh, firstly, uh, like uh, uh, after the procedure, uh, uh, the suture line uh, there is a scarring which develops, and ultimately the act, the whatever length we have gained by operating, actually it reduced to uh, some size, and 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 also there is a large raw area which which is left. Uh, so that right. is that is. So what will the large raw area do? What does, how does the large raw area affect? Sir, it heals, by, it heals by scarring, sir. Secondary intention. No, it heals by secondary scarring, uh, intention. So what happens? What happens later on? Sir, sir, uh, there's a tension on the suture line, sir. Okay. Then still Point. later on? Still Sorry, later sir? on, what happens? Still later on, like uh, immediately there will be tension on suture line once it starts uh, healing. Suture line, there will be scarring. Okay, accepted. But still later on, what extra happens? Does it have any effect on the maxillary growth? Uh, sir, yeah. So, so the uh, so there is a hampering of the uh, development of maxillary uh, growth, sir. Yeah. So that, that is what because because of the scarring, the maxillary growth becomes uh, uh, disturbed. So there is mid face retrusion. The child keeps on growing. The maxilla does not grow proportionately. Why that happens? Yes. Because lot of area is exposed, bones are exposed, which heal by secondary yes. scarring. Okay, so that is the reason yes. PWK is generally out of favor. If you can like uh, reduce the raw area, then it is well acceptable. Okay, then that is a so, so question here comes then uh, you are doing VWK uh, for uh, achieving some sort of pushback so that palatal lengthening will be there. But yes. because of scarring, that, uh, that pushback may be reduced because scar will contract and the pushback. So how do you, what are the other methods to improve or to create palatal lengthening? Sir, uh, other method, the other method which uh, generally people do is for low sir, two flap uh, palatoplasty, so uh, double flap palatoplasty. So that is another method to increase the palatal length, sir. Okay. Any other method? Any other method where we can increase the tissues in the sub palate? Intravelar, intravelar, okay. okay. All right. So, have you heard of Mukherjee flap? Mukherjee flap. 
एम एम फ्लैप मुरारी मुखर्जी आई हर्ड आई हर्ड द नेम आई डोंट नो एक्जेक्टली द स्टेप्स डेर यू बोरो फ्लैप फ्रॉम द चीक मीडियल बकल म्यूकोसा एंड इट इज पोस्टरली बेस्ड देन यू put it into the soft pellet where you are suppose that we want a palatal lengthening you, you use it to soft pellet. yes yes so that is one in very severe cases or fistula cases like that yes okay Ma madam you can ask madam that's no oh you can proceed sir Hello sir, am I audible sir? Okay, you uh, you tell the uh, surgical steps. Uh, yes ma'am. So uh, so in this case, uh, uh, ma'am, uh, I would I would like to first uh, give the uh, uh, ma'am. Uh, uh, briefly, you tell uh, uh, steps. Step, right? Yeah. So uh, so oppos. What will you do? Yeah yeah. Position yes. is the prime most important, ma'am. So in this. this case uh, the neck should be hyper extended uh, and uh, following which i i, uh, I would uh, like to use the ding bang mouth mouth retractor retractor ma'am and uh, uh, and also i will go for the throat pack uh, throat packing any name given for the position rose position rose position yeah rose position so uh, uh, then uh, Uh, being, uh then after that i'll do a packing ma'am and then after packing i would like to go for adrenaline infiltration uh, which is in the concentration of 1 is to 2 lakhs and uh, that is basically this basic uh, tube you use for this uh ma'am r r r e tube ma'am any uh, little more uh, specification r e tube with uh, south ma'am south sorry, sorry. Yeah, south pole. yes south correct Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. What is the uh, yes, ma'am? What is the importance of this tube? Ma'am, ma'am, it has why, a ma'am, it has a, uh, a kink over there. So, and secondly, secondly, uh, we can we can at the same time we can see whether the child child is able to vent uh, the child is ventilating or not. So, and the uh, vent it, will uh, accommodate the curve of uh, the mandible. Okay, mandible. lower alveolus. Yes, ma'am. It prevents the compression yes, and all. Okay. Yes, and uh, uh, yes. is there any new uh, recently? The is it a cuff tube or a non-cuffed? Ma'am, cuff like. Are you sure? Is it a cuffed or a non-cuffed? Ma'am, non-cuffed. Yes. Uh, nowadays, uh, uh, are they using any cuff tubes also? Yes, ma'am. Like uh, nowadays, they are using cuff tubes also, and uh, but it's mostly uh, used for more than 4.5 uh, size of tubes. Many cuff so, uh, tubes they are using. Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. Right. Proceed. Yes, ma'am. So uh, ADR infiltration, ma'am, I'll do, uh, and after that, uh, after. What is the concentration? Ma'am, one is to two lakhs, ma'am. One is to two lakhs concentration. I'll use, ma'am, and. Okay. Ma'am, uh, uh, I'll take a uh, one ampule of uh, adrenaline, uh, which is having one ml of ADR yes, in a concentration. Yes, ma'am. And I'll put in into a hundred, two hundred ml of uh, normal saline, ma'am. Okay. And, and then I infiltrate and wait for uh, seven minutes, ma'am. Minimum seven minutes. What all areas you will infiltrate? Ma'am, ma'am, uh, I'll infiltrate the uh, uh, margins of the cleft, uh, the maxillary tuberosity. the uh, you you will lock and the uh, at the, the soft and hard palate junction ma'am four areas i will infiltrate mm, uh not sub uh, periosteal sorry ma'am sub periosteal flaps muco periosteal flaps yes ma'am uh, that, that is the, uh, yeah at the junction of hard palate yes, yes yes only junction you will infiltrate Uh, okay. Can repeat the uh, points. Which points you told? Slowly, slowly repeat the points. 
Very uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's at uh, the margin of the cleft, sir, at the maxillary tuberosity, at the uh, uvula, and junction of soft and hard palate, sir. What about subperistal? Let it better mask in. How will you infiltrate the subperistal region? So anterior to the maxillary tuberosity, also in the um, just next to the inject into the. Yes, yes. Hello, sir. Will you infiltrate in the uh, retromolar region? Yes, yes, ma'am. So that is important, and even superiorly, you should uh, look for uh, 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 the, uh, that paleness, okay? Adequacy. Paleness. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Right, proceed. Uh, ma'am, right. uh, then. Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Uh, ma'am, after uh, after uh, wait. No. I, I would like to uh, proceed with the uh, cleft incision, uh, which I will take with a 15 number uh, uh, blade. And uh, uh, like uh, for the whole extent of uh, uh, cleft, I'll I'll take the incision. And uh, uh, there's a, a second incision I would like to take. Uh, no, no, no. In first incision itself, you should take care. It's a cleft edge you are incising, no, with uh, number uh, 11 blade. How yes, will you incise? Where will you incise? There is specification, isn't it? Ma'am, uh, uh, to, more towards the oral side. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Uh, and uh, then. So you to have a little uh, more for the mm -hmm. nasal layer. Na yes. Nasal layer, yes, ma'am. And then after that, I will uh, take a S shape incision around the maxillary tuberosity, ma'am. And. Uh, uh, then will uh, you use the same uh, 15 number blade or any oh sorry 11 number blade or anything else 15 number blade now yes you will use uh, for cleft edge 11 and uh, maxillary edge it's a uh, 15 number yeah yes yes and yes and then uh, uh, like uh, from then, uh, where to where? From posterior to anterior. Any yes. precautions you take while giving the incision? Where exactly you will give? Ma'am, at the junction of the uh, uh, palate and alveolus. I'll, I'll go in that area. Okay. And I'll, what I'll, you I'll, want to protect? Uh, Ma'am, the vessel, uh, the greater palate vessel. While giving this incision, you will take care not to injure the tooth buds, okay? So that's mm -hmm. why you leave some margin towards the gingiva, right? Yes, 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 ma'am. Few millimeters away from the gingiva, you will give the incision, okay? Yes. And uh, yes. uh, as you uh, advance the incision, you will yes. increase the obliquity so that some tissue will be there towards the palate, right? Yes. Yes, so that will enhance this grand uh, healing pattern uh, uh, very well, very rapidly. It will uh, heal, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. Then go, go to the next step. Ma'am, then uh, a mucoperiosteal flap I would like to elevate, ma'am. Uh, How will uh, you elevate? Ma'am, anterior to posterior and medial to lateral, ma'am. I would elevate. Okay. And 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 then separate uh, then, the nasal layer first or the mucoperiosteal flaps first? Ma'am, my nasal layer uh, first. Will you elevate? With what instrument? All these uh, instruments also will be asked in exams, okay? Ma'am, my nasal layer with the hockey stick, uh, like I'll leave it with hockey stick. Nasal layer. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that or the uh, dental scalar. Okay. Yes. Okay. How do you elevate this uh, mucoperiosteal flaps? Ma'am, uh, like. Which uh, instrument you use? Uh, Ma'am, uh, ra raspirate, rose raspirate. I'll use. Yes. Yes. And uh, the direction will be like anterior to posterior and medial to lateral. I'll proceed in yes. that direction. Yes. Uh, 
is um, till what extent? Ma'am, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go another uh, five millimeter around the vessel. And so, till you uh, see the greater palatine uh, pedicle, yes, then what do you do? Yes. I, I'll, I'll dissect around the uh, uh, pedicle, ma'am. Yes. And so that additional gain of length will be like. Yes. I can additional How can gain. you gain it? Ma'am, uh, carefully dissecting around the pedicle uh, mm. so that additional will be there. Okay, then? Uh, Ma'am, the muscle dissection from both the layers. Yes. yes. Where, where, where from you will uh, do the muscle dissection? What will you do exactly? Ma'am, uh, from uh, like lip. Levator will I palate will be dissected. Uh, From where? So, where will be attached the abnormal attachment of uh, these muscles? From where you will detach? So from the border of the heart palate and the cleft edge. Okay. Yes. Yes, ma'am. So th those are the abnormal attachment of the levator uh, to the inner the cleft palate. So you have unless you detach the orientation of the muscles will not uh, con uh, convert from the vertical to horizontal. Right. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Right. Okay. Yes, ma'am. No. Then. Ma'am, after that, uh, I would like mm. to, uh, I'll proceed with the suturing, ma'am. So for suturing, yes. I'll, I'll first suture the nasal layer, ma'am. And yes, there is a, a, a tension. The nasal layer could not be approximated. Yes, ma'am. So how will you suture? What will you do? Closer. Will you bring the any the, any yes. Sorry, ma'am, I, I didn't get. If nasal layer could not be approximated, you have elevated, okay? Yes, ma'am. So there is a tension in the nasal layer. So how will you or what will you do? Can you bring any tissue from anywhere? To Mama, close the uh, nasal layers. Vomerine flap. Yeah, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, superior, superior based vomerine flap. flap yes, yes. yes, yes. 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 Okay. And, mm. and uh, that is how that is how uh, I can suture yes. the nasal layer. Yes. And Either in uh, suture, if it is no problem, and if there is any tension, you can take the vomerine flaps or the, as I said, the MM flap also can be used sometimes. Okay. Yes. 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 MM can, flap can be used for the nasal layer or the oral or soft yes. tissue tensioning. Yes. So that is the important use of the MM flap. Yes. Yes. Next. Ma'am, uh, then after the tension free closure of the nasal layer, I'll, uh, I'll align the muscle uh, and yes. su suture the muscle. And after that, I'll suture the oral layer, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Right. What is the common site like, uh, common site of uh, dehiscence? Uh, most commonly, what happens in which area the dehiscence occurs? Uh, sir, posterior part, sir. The Where? Posterior which part? Particular specific area is told. Where will you get more tension? Where will be the, where is the highest tension area? In closing the palate. Just, just near, 
just near the hard palate ma'am hard palate and junction no? junction of hard and soft yes, yes. palate yes ma'am junction of hard and soft palate if there is a, 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 a tension while closing what will you do <clears throat> Will you break something? Ma'am, uh, uh, head, head of humulus, uh, humulus ma'am. Huh? So I'll, I'll break the he head of humulus so that I can uh, uh, take the tensor will at parity anteriorly. Book of the humulus. Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Book yes, of the humulus. Yes, yes ma'am. What is uh, uh, which will uh, hook this hook of the humulus? Which uh, will go tens around? Tensor, tensor will at parity. Yes. So you will relax those muscles yes, so that the uh, that area the tension will be reduced. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, so uh, uh, when you are fracturing sir. the hemolus, yes, sir. And uh, like you are one option is to fracture the hemolus. What yes, is the sir. other option? What other things can be done to mobilize the muscle? Sir, uh, just we can uh, without fracturing also we can uh, dis dissect the muscle and bring it anteriorly. Bring the tendon. Bring the tendon yes. out of. Uh, bring the tendon anteriorly. Yes, sir. Or what is the third uh, option? These are uh, mentioned options. One is fracture the hook of the hemolus. Second is remove the hook from the tendon. Ham, the tendon. And third option is you release the muscle medial to the hemolus. Let the tendon lateral part be attached, which is connecting the tympanic membrane to the hemolus. Yes, but the middle part of the muscle you can just release instead yes. of releasing all things. Yes, yes. So they just yes. see methods which have been advised. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Then, so that is the area of the junction of the hard and soft palate is the most common area where you will have a fistula. Yes. yes. All right. Yes. Okay. Um, then, what about uh, uh, further? What we will do next? Uh, post operative care. Uh, sir, uh, sir, post. Uh, I, I, uh, I have to uh, pack the raw area, sir. I'll pack the raw area, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, immediate, immediately, uh, post-operative, I will give tonsillar po position to the child, sir. Uh, lateral decubitus with uh, mouth uh, near the bed, like turning the head near the bed, sir. Uh, you mean post-operative? You want to give that position? Why? Sir, so like uh, tongue fall should not be there and lateral. No, no, not recommended. If the, in which cases are you really worried about this particular problem what you're feeling? What you're saying is tongue fall will happen and child will have apnea. In which particular cases you expect this problem? There are specific, any any sequence, any syndrome is associated with yeah, Perry, Perry Robinson sequence. Perry Robinson sequence. What happens yes. in that? So there is a macrogranthia, glossoptosis, and cleft palate. Okay, so in this the the macro macrogranthia mandible is protruded. Yes. So in these yes. patients, you are suspecting tongue fall to happen, and then but in routine, you don't have to make the routine case like a case which you are showing. You will not yes. make them yes. Uh, yes. head turn or anything. If the child is gone, yes. okay, well enough. So if the child is fine, also okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Sir, uh, like, uh, uh, I would uh, advise the parents to give uh, uh, clear liquids, uh, mm. uh, uh, maybe six six hour after surgery, and uh, then uh, uh, then semi uh, then uh, like mix uh, like a uh, food which is uh, don't have any solid particles in it, mm. Mm. so that it don't get uh, entangled in the suture line. Oh, one is clear yes. liquid, second is liquids. Clear, yes. What do you call clear liquids? Sir, clear uh, water or uh, juices which is sieved. Like sugar, sugar juice water, is, plain yes. water. Yes. Okay. Sir. okay. Yes. So what about liquid? Then next is liquid diet. Liquid yes. example, can you give? Sorry, sir. Liquid diet examples. Examples of liquid diet. Sir, sir. Uh, in liquid diet, I can I, I, I can give mi uh, milk to the child, sir. But it uh, but all the Particles have to be thoroughly removed from the milk. Filtered out, filtered out. all these uh, filtered, cream and everything has to be filtered out. Okay, milk. Yes, sir. And yes, what, sir. Is, what is the protocol followed in your hospital? Different hospitals have different protocols. What is the sir, protocol sir. in your hospital? Feeding yes, sir. So, so, 
so uh, uh, so like after 6 hours we start with the clear fluid sir and overnight we uh, keep the patient on a clear fluid like uh, glucon glucon d water or sugar water and uh, the next day we start milk uh, giving milk and semi solid food that is obviously after filtering adding thorough filtering and when do you start solid diet uh sir general uh, like uh, like solid diet we start after a week sir like till that we give semi solid only okay just verify your protocol because uh, in our we should we follow the protocol of 3 weeks of uh, uh, semi solid and 3 weeks of uh, uh, solid like around 6 weeks later only we start the solid diet Uh, so But solid, solid. We don't start, sir. Like uh, semi-solid and thoroughly filtered. Only we'll give for uh, uh, like we ask to give after one week, sir. Yeah, just clarify But the protocol from your institute because that is very important. Why we are worried yes. about this? Like why solid should be delayed? Sir, sir, because uh, because that that particle get uh, entangled to the suture and uh, the suture may give away or or there is a local infection. Uh, like it can give rise to. Okay. Sorry, sir. Uh, Dehiscence will be there. Suture dehiscence will yes. be there. Yes. 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 Uh, we are quite solid, but at least the uh, scar is settled, wound is settled. So six weeks is the yes. time when inflammation settles. So I can take normally. This is the protocol we follow, but it may vary from institute depending on your socio-economic, educational status. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Most of the centers uh, we follow the uh, six weeks. Solids yes. we don't give so early. Yes. Ah, uh, minimum of three weeks. There is no question of giving uh, solids. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Even uh, soft diet also, it's like a paste. Ah. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And ma immediately the liquid has to be given. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, ah, uh, if tolerable, only liquids, and for after three weeks, ah, uh, the semi-solids are solids. Yes, ma'am. Well, yes, ma that the child, ah, uh, this paste will like a liquid only you give, not the yes, yes, paste type also. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thorough filtering. Better to say uh, liquids and start the solids uh, after six weeks. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma recommend. Yes, ma yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Okay. Then what else? Post-operative patient has so you discharge the patient, went home after six weeks. Patient has come. Then I mean, what are the things you will plan for that? Uh, sir, uh, like uh, What are uh, the next? Goal? What are your goals? You told me no? in the beginning. You told your goals. Sir, then speech therapy. Like I would like to. What palate? Sorry, ma'am. Like I didn't. Will you advise any exercises? How do you strengthen the palatal muscles? Palatal yeah. muscles. How will you strengthen it? Think of some exercises how you can strengthen the palatal muscle. Which child will be able to do? You're talking about one-year-old child. Puffing, puffing the mouth. Hmm. Tell me again. Puffing the mouth. Puffing oh. But will the child follow you? At one year, you will tell puff the mouth. Will the child do that? Nothing. Oh. The child will do on his own. Sorry, sir. Balloon. You can tell. Give a balloon to the child. Child can blow the balloon. Blowing. Mm. Yes. Give float that blowing float, na. That yes. you can give. The child yes. will keep on blowing. Like boom, boom, boom. He will do like that, na. Then that one. Yes. 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 Okay. Then you will start your speech therapy and speech assessment and speech therapy. Yes. Protocol. All yes. right. Yes. Then. Uh, 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 Post-operative, because you realized after one year that child is having some what is velopharyngeal incompetence. Sir, uh, the uh, the uh, there is incompetency of the uh, uh, basically there is a abnormal coupling of the uh, nasal and oral cavities. Uh, it's basically because of uh, uh, muscles are not not aligned properly. Which okay. uh, which yeah. is unable to close the uh, sphincters, so, so non-alignment of muscle, not able to close the velopharyngeal sphincters. Inability to close the orifices uh, is called velopharyngeal incompetence. Okay. Yes. 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 <clears throat> 
What is passive interest? Passive interest is a, a, a ring of uh, lymph nodes, ma'am. Like. Huh? This is the mm. clinical finding you see in a patient with the palate when you ask the patient to uh, uh, say the words voice like uh, ah and all. So what yes. you, what is that finding? Uh, that, uh, the bulge which we get ma'am. Like, ah, what is it? Uh, what is post, it? Posterior pharyng pharyngeal wall. What, uh, what, uh, what muscle? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, palate. Superior palate. constrictor. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Superior constrictor and palate. Uh, so it is a compensatory mechanism uh, to close the uh, orifice when there is a yes. uh, cleft palate. Okay, the so passivant yes. read that yes. you have to uh, explain and uh, tell in the findings also, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma How will you diagnose velopharyngeal incompetence? Sir, sir the, uh, the child is not able to take... Uh, no, no, uh, no. Diagnose. diagnose. Okay, How will okay. Diagnose? so, so, so a, a intraoral examination for speech therapy, uh, speech mechanisms we'll see, sir, and then articulating, articular testing, uh, video fluoroscopy. So these are the way. For this child we are talking, this particular child you have operated one and a half years. You operated after six months or one year, child is two years. So how will you know that probably some velopharyngeal uh, insufficiency is there? Sir, uh, hypernasality will be there, sir. And uh, nasal air emission, like whenever he speaks. And nasal regurgitation. Parents will tell that so whenever child is speaking. So we have to diagnose clinically first. No? Then only will subject the child to yes. all your whatever you are telling. Yes, sir. Yes. Those things are done very late. Video fluoroscopy, major endoscopy will be done only when child crosses age when they can. So around three to four years after the you will do. So it is about first you will see whether the nasal regurgitation is there and if the speech is causing some nasal is not intonation is there. Escape of yes. air from the mouth. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, I think uh, it's okay, madam. Uh, or yes. Ask Maybe yes, sir, yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir